thought, you know what? Let's just go with it. Screw it. <laughs> it's all good. So, yeah. how are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Good. So, this hey. is for Oak Bay up in Vic. Yes. Yes, it is. For Very my cool. socials project. Doing a project on the so social justice movement. Or not really a social justice movement, just a movement of some sort. And then I was like, Flat Earth, that's a pretty cool one. I'm interested. Nice. And then, yeah, I just reached out to you because I saw the documentary on Netflix, which I really enjoyed. And um, I'm glad. Yeah, I thought I would just see if you could talk for a bit. Sure. I mean, I've got a I've got a show in 45 minutes, but whatever questions you got, I'm willing to to discuss. All right. Yeah. Well, I was just wondering, like, how like uh, the community has changed this past year because I've I've seen a lot more in the, like the public eye, and yeah. I just think it's being taken a bit more seriously now. Maybe I don't know. That's well, what it seems we like. we've been hitting the the media. We pretty much saturated all the lower tiers of social media at this point. I mean, YouTube we've beaten pretty much to death, and mainstream we've been a lot of different things. And yeah, the Netflix documentary helped a lot because it wasn't. If you know anything about filmmaking, it wasn't supposed to do anything. You know, pe right. so many thousands of people make films every year, and we didn't expect this to do. You know, even the producers like, yeah, this thing's never going to sell. And it's sold instantly. So, because it's an interesting polarizing topic. So, uh, we've been... Uh, things haven't changed that much other than we've become media spoiled. To right. where now we're kind of whining about things. We're whining about... It's like it's like, like I'm Jaren from Jaronism. He's like, oh, you know, Newsweek's picking on me. It's like, <laughs> it's like really, dude? That's the, your biggest complaint? You don't have a lot to complain about. Yeah, um, no. so other than that no not not too much everyone's kind of in its business as usual it's getting bigger uh you know we just did our third conference third american conference in dallas and then the next the one in for 2020 will be in um, vegas right which will be fun yeah, yeah. When, when would that be uh it won't be until the fall Oh, okay, right. but there'll be other ones before that uh but we're we're having a hard time just cap i'm having a hard time keeping up with just all the different countries that are talking about flat earth uh right. in fact somebody i just got i sent a i got was sent a link this morning so they're talking about obscure uh a, a female a girl a, a female band rock band in israel did a flat earth song and i just got the link to that it's like really it's like i mean because I'm, I'm looking at the characters i'm going i have no idea that that's hebrew and i had to like like punch all the stuff into translation and so i sent them a, a message and they wrote back oh long live flat earth it's like yeah <laughs> right on so okay, yeah um yeah that was uh i think it, yeah so um what, what's the theory about like the the dome i was curious about that one like uh is that like the main dome thing? versus no dome yeah yeah, I mean, it's it's. I think it's pretty much seventy thirty. So uh, everyone in the flat Earth community, you know, they don't believe in the globe, but seventy yeah. percent believe that there's, uh, you know, that we're in a building, and thirty percent don't believe that they they think it's it's just this wide open space, which is fine, except you still run into the the problem of atmosphere and pressure versus no pressure, and so that the, which is why they're in the minority, which is kind of goes into the the thing the problem with the Earth and the vacuum of space versus gravity, which really wasn't talked about in the documentary, which is um, if you know anything about physics, you know the, you can't have pressure sitting next to non pressure, right, without a barrier. Okay, well, what, what space then? <laughs> where does where does our atmosphere end and where does space begin? Because there can be no such thing as a bleeding edge of space. It literally cannot exist. We cannot replicate it here under any conditions. And uh, so anybody who thinks that there's no dome, it's like, oh, that's fine. You know, you can think that, but you're still going to run into the problem of the barrier, you know, where the pressure difference lies. All right. So. All right, yeah. And then how is how is it that you f found yourself into the flat earth community? How how did I get into it? Yeah. Boredom. Just boredom? sheer freaking boredom. Uh it was I I looked at just about every conspiracy that you could think of. I mean, the documentary was very true in that regard where I I had an opinion on just about every conspiracy. Some I liked, some I didn't like, and then I saw flat earth and I was going, "Well, this thing's a piece of trash. <laughs> I I can I can blow this thing away in 3 days. Tops." And right. nine months later, I'm just banging my head on the keyboard going, no, no, 
can't be, cannot freaking be. And so instead of just kind of throwing my hands up and saying, all right, obviously I'm crazy, I will make a series of videos and I'll put them out to the internet, throw them out on social media because the hive mind misses nothing. The internet is very, very intelligent as a group. And the opposite of what I thought was going to happen happened. They, uh, they came back and they, people started coming at me, subject matter experts and, and different people in different fields, especially the, the military started saying yeah you know what not nuts not nuts here's why it's like great now my life is ruined (laughs) and i have to keep going and and that has never changed i mean i have yet to find an academic who was who to call me up to say okay here is where you're absolutely wrong in disputable proof and so it just that was five years ago well five years ago this february so yeah it's been a wild wild ride well, yeah, I see a lot of people trying to disprove it, but I've, I'm not sure if I've seen any conclusive ev- evidence. Um, uh, what, trust me when I say, because people say, well, you've got an answer for everything. It's like, yeah, yeah, I do, because I went over this for nine months. I mean, I wasn't even going to make a video until uh, I had an answer, until I was satisfied that I could, no matter what you threw at me, I could answer it in, in some fashion. And so, in fact, I haven't heard an original question. I mean, some guy threw at me a, a gravity sh- light shift thing uh, with the moon today. It was it was an odd question. I go, well, that's pretty original. But I haven't received a, an interesting question in probably nine months. Right. And, and even and before that, maybe six months before that. I mean, we, there's only so many questions you can ask, so, yeah. which is I don't mind. I mean, it's part of what I do. All right. Yeah. Uh, I hope you don't mind me asking, but what was the show you were, you were going to go do? Oh, no, no. This was uh, my show, my little radio show. So, like, when when I started doing this, they didn't cover this in the documentary. Uh, there was a little radio show from a, um, a little private podcasty type network called Truth Frequency. And they called me up almost immediately after I had done my second interview with one of their people. And they said, hey, how would you like to do your own show once a week? And I was like, okay, sure, why not? Okay. So it's called Strange World. Uh, and it's on in 40 minutes or so and on True Frequency Radio and runs for a couple hours. And it's kind of, I've turned it into sort of the, one of the drum beats of Flat Earth. I mean, I literally do a Flat Earth show every week. Tell people what's going on. Talk about, what are we talking about this week? The meetups and different little strange things that have been happening. And then phone calls we take a lot of phone calls people who want to talk about what's going on in the community like we wrapped up our european tour which was neat uh we had a van driving all over europe every every country in europe uh van just covered with flat earth memorabilia and they stopped in all the major cities and got out and did street activism and i and i flew over there for three of those cities i flew over there for um dublin belfast and uh, cardiff they said, hey, can you come by for some cities? Like, okay, sure. It was great. It was absolutely wonderful. Yeah, and then you used to live in Victoria, right? So. I did. I did. I lived, uh, I can even tell you the exact address. I lived, hang on. I lived in Tulip Avenue in Vic. So not that far from the city. But you, now you'd, have to, you'd have to map quest it, but I, I assure you it's it's there. And it's yeah, uh, I, I moved up there with a, uh, um, a woman that was in the flat earth, younger woman, uh, who met me at a, a meetup in Seattle back in 2016, early 2016. And I was there for a year and didn't know much about it. Most Americans don't even know that Victoria is even a thing. And yeah. I'm, from, I'm from down here. I'm from, you know, Whidbey Island, you know, San Juan. So I'm, I literally can see Victoria from, from right up the road. And uh, most Americans think that Canada basically stops at Vancouver and there's nothing else west. <laughs> and it's true, and you don't know. I mean, there's this massive <laughs> island that even most people that live there don't even see a fraction of it. You know, no, we, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's deceivingly large. It's huge. It's absolutely yeah. massive. And we say here, like, we're going up island where it's like, oh, yeah, 30 minutes. <laughs> you go up island on, on you know, Vancouver Island, you, you may not come back. <laughs> you don't know. It, it, you don't know. I mean, there's some people it's like, oh yeah, I have no idea where we are. It's it's a fascinating place, uh, yeah. and I loved it. I I love I loved everything about that place. Canada, Northwest Canada is is so well. Is it considered technically? It's considered Southwest Canada, but the western part of Canada is just a, a great place. And and being from Seattle my whole life, it was it was 
it's very very similar you know it's one of those few places you can drive and cross the border and the accent does not change at all yeah. it's uh it's really cool so yeah no i, I really enjoyed the video that you sent of the ufo that oh was isn't really, that cool yeah that was really cool yeah and i absolutely believe it i absolutely okay. think that's real um most, i don't know what else it could be well yeah <laughs> it, it, there were people that there were commenting you could you could find the original on youtube uh there were people commenting well it's obvious that it was a parade float that broke free from its moorings. It was a turtle, and then it flew over, you know, over this bay. And I'm going, oh, okay. First, there was no wind. Uh, second, Victoria doesn't have a lot of parades, and they certainly don't do parade floats <laughs> with yeah, balloons. No. Uh, and third, it was um, it was freaking everybody out. If it was if it was a stupid float, it wouldn't have freaked people out as bad. I mean, what what got me the the legitimacy part of it was when the people in the sailboats in the distance. Where you could hear them, they were freaking out. They, were, in fact, it was closer to them than it was the the drunk guys. Isn't it always the case? A couple guys <laughs> drinking whiskey. It's like, oh, look at that! It's a UFO. It's, it's like, why can't it be me? So yeah, it was really really cool. And uh, when I saw it, I I immediately knew. Most people don't understand unless you really you know do do some research that the UFOs that you always hear about that UFOs are like cars. They work just fine with their lights off. But why, why would a UFO... UFO doesn't want to be seen because they don't have any engine that makes a sound. You just turn the lights off and no one's going to look up ever. Unless, of course, it's like that where it's dusk. And, you know, it was, that was a simple screw up where a guy was like, it's like, oh, it's dark enough. I'm fine. It'll be fine. It's like, no, no, it's not. It's, it's like there's a whole bunch of people that are bored out of their tree just laying in the sailboats going, hey, what the hell is that thing? No, that's one of the coolest sightings I've ever seen on video ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was I, I really enjoyed the video. Yeah, but we're, what we I could find on YouTube if I wanted to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just look up uh, Oak Bay UFO. Hmm. Yeah, you'll find it. I mean, it's it was uh, the guys that that found it. Of course, they made it. They turned it into a little production, which was kind of fun. But it was. Um, uh, I remember watching it years ago. You know, shortly after it first came out, I was like, I'm really surprised it didn't get more traction than it did. Because there's just some some people that watched it. You could see it in the comment section. They just refused. It was like, no, no, it's not. It's not. It's like, what the hell is it then? <laughs> it's because it's not a plane. It's it was it was a good enough resolution. I mean, if it was shot like today with the decent cameras we have now, oh my god, it would be so conclusive. But I mean, it's like it's not a helicopter. There was no blades. The 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 thing that gets you is the sound. And that is, there was no wind blowing into the microphone. And so, and we all know what planes sound like. We know what a prop plane sounds like. We know what a jet sounds like. We know what a helicopter sounds like. Yeah. That made no sound at all. So, yeah. and it didn't look like a balloon. So tell me what it is. And people were like, well, it's got to be a balloon. It's like, no, <laughs> it's air. It's, it's a great people, thing. So share, share it with your friends. Have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are just like that, though. They just dispute everything and have no faith. No, if yeah, if, if they don't, if they cannot register the the concept, and it's they won't. That you know, the five stages of of acceptance are powerful things. You know, denial, um, uh, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. There's so many people that will not get past um, denial. They just can't, cannot do it. And it must be difficult for you, like being such like a center point in the flat Earth community and having people like that always probably talking. Right. Um, there's not as many as you might think. I mean, everybody, the, the good thing for us is everybody in the flat earth community starts out, um, hating flat earth. They hate it. And so yeah. they tear it down themselves. And so they go through the five stages of acceptance. So most people can get past it. Now the dedicated trolls, they won't get past it. They, they're stuck in denial and anger. And that's a natural thing. I mean, there's a reason why denial is literally the first one every single time. And I don't blame them. I, I, I can't get mad at him and I can't get that frustrated because it's like, look, it, it, it takes takes a while. I mean, I was it took me nine months before I finally made my first video and said, now, granted, I had a lot less material to work with than most people, but I put it out there and said, OK, so when co somebody comes at me, I can't yell at him because like, look, I used to beat you. Okay. So wh wh how could I yell? And how many people do you think you've convinced personally or like oh. got on board? I have no idea. Because, well, because face to face, I don't do that much stuff. I mean, I do meetups and I do conferences and um, and stuff like that. In fact, I'm doing a meetup down in South Seattle Saturday. Um, but through the videos, a lot, a lot. 
uh, mostly through the mirrors. The people that mirrored my videos, those are the ones that really, that's how it really took off. Is that, um, I mean, Flat Earth Clues, yeah, I got a bunch of hits, sure. But the people that took the video, because I made a Creative Commons license, which means you can take it and just do whatever you want. I'm never going to strike you. Uh, I've never yeah. thrown a copyright strike in my life. And so there were people that, that got 4 million plus hits on, on some of my stuff. You know, they were making quite a few nickels, I guess. And it was great. It was fantastic. Um, so how many of those were converted? I have no idea. I mean, I, all I know is the emails just never stopped and the phone calls and the texts and it just just got weirder and weirder. I mean, hell, I was a I was at a restaurant literally last night. I was in I walked in that restaurant. I was in there maybe 30 seconds. I have never been in that restaurant before in my life. And 30 seconds, the waiter just just clocks me almost immediately. He comes over and he goes, you, Mark? And I go, yeah, why? And, he, and he's just staring at me. I go, you saw it, didn't you? And he goes, he goes, yeah, I did. And he goes, he goes, can I take a selfie with you? And it's like, oh, yeah. And I run into that now all the time. And right, yeah. so it's, again, 90% of our membership is in the closet the, and for, for various reasons. Um, in fact, you want to look up a great video on, on, in fact, I mirrored it on my channel. It was from a gamer, a guy that records gaming videos called Asmongold. And he did a little straw poll. I don't know if you've ever seen this where you can do like an instant straw poll right there in the middle of the game. And he was said, okay, is the earth flat actually, right? And remember, it's completely anonymous. Nobody's right. seen anything. And they were tracking about 100, 120 votes a second. And before it even got to 3,000, we were tracking 53%. And that, and then most of that demographic is under 20. Now, right. you take those same that two three thousand people you know younger guys you put them in a stadium and have try to have them raise their hands you know that that number will drop to single digits because of the peer pressure that's right, yeah. that's the difference between flat earth and everything else the peer pressure keeps this from getting just crazy go nuts so right. yeah. and do you think the flat earth has a stigma with it like uh not as bad every the the there's no concrete stigma because people are trying to figure out what box to put it in and they don't know. So, I mean, some of the media would love to paint it like a cult, right? but because it's got some religious overtones to it and I'm not the literal religious overtones, just, you know, that we t say things and like believers and canon and, you know, not, not one of us and some of that stuff, but we don't have a Bible. We don't have a compound. We don't yeah. do chanting or have robes anything like that so they have a hard time no no the only thing that flat earth is kind of the stigma is it's so over the top it's beyond ridiculous right and which is fine I, I that's the reaction you should have when you when you first run into flat earth but but there's no there's no one label that's stuck for the last five years that, that the media want either positive or negative other than we seem to be gaining this groundswell of kind of an open-minded question everything it's like why not you know why not question that why why take authority's word for it or is it the old saying which i love you know trust everyone but count your change you know don't just take everything at face value that's the message i keep trying to tell people and and once they get into this yeah it gets really weird because once you get into flat earth you all of a sudden revisit every other conspiracy you've ever ever thought of so. right yeah 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 I, don't know, I always see like just like a lot of stuff not necessarily a lot but a lot of stuff online and stuff of people just like saying that like people who live in flat earth are like crazy and stuff like that and i don't i don't, I don't like that too much because it's like well it's, it's why crazy. why wouldn't you though i mean seriously uh, I'm, i wasn't kidding when i said if you don't laugh at that flat earth in the first five minutes you hear about it there's probably something wrong with you because that is you've been conditioned so much you've been conditioned for at least i mean let's say you just went through high school 12 years of a globe in your classroom a globe yeah. somewhere in your life you are you are doing it's it is so tough to break out of because you've been you know you've just seen it so in fact the, the i'm sorry i'm looking over your shoulder so is that a, an actual 2001 space odyssey poster yes yes it is that's brilliant Absolutely brilliant. Okay, one, there's the globe in there. 2001 Space Odyssey, if you know the conspiracy behind that. Did you ever see, are you follow, follow any of the conspiracies behind the making of that movie? Um. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, a few. 
I've I've heard I've I haven't like delved too deep into them, but I I know them. Look, yeah, look at Room Two Three Seven if you haven't already. Uh, wonderful documentary, and if and if you don't know where to find it, I'll I'll send you a, a, a copy through WeTransfer. I've got it on my machine somewhere. Um, oh. it, but it is a fascinating. I mean, the the whole two thousand one was part of this whole flat Earth journey, which is. You got to remember when it was released. It was released in 1968. Well, the first landing on the moon was in 1969, and yeah. the the story goes is that they that NASA, the military, went to the best directors out there and said, "Okay, what can we simulate for space? What can we do on right. film?" And there was only remember there was just a handful of guys back in the 60s you could go. You know, a young Spielberg. I mean, Lucas I think was still at freaking USC. Or if that, um, there was so many, all the guys were really young, but in fact, young Stanley Kubrick. And he took five years to make that movie. Well, tell me a studio that would allow anyone to, to sit and, and shoot for five freaking years. And they, but their, their drop dead deadline was that you have to have it finished by 1968. And that's exactly what happened. And then we filled in the gaps after that. Fascinating. Right, yeah. And it is one of the finest um, examples of cinema that has kept its own into Blu-ray. So you remember, it was shot before VHS, it was shot before any of this stuff, and then when movies were converted to Blu-ray later, you could see the flaws. You could see the, right. the, the technical flaws. Not 2001. 2001 was gorgeous. I mean, he, you, you watch when, when they're going towards the moon, it is so, and you, you're looking at this and going, how is that not the real moon? It was so perfect. And, well, it makes you wonder. It's like, okay, what can if they could do that in cinema back in 1968. What can we do now? You know, especially with NASA. Granted, their production values are terrible. But find me a, a movie company that, that gets $52 million a day like NASA does. Yeah. No, yeah, I remember I, I saw a movie. It wasn't the documentary that you were talking about. Not Room 237, but uh, it was one. It was just like a film Yeah. Um, made. I forget what it was called, but it was about the making and then about how people with uh speculating or yeah speculating that um that stanley kubrick was pulling for the moon oh, yeah. and then it was all this big thing and it was just like left it up for to speculation at the end which i really enjoyed I forget the name of it um that's it like that, that's okay i mean i probably saw it but if you get a chance to look at 237 and i it's a lot of it's deciphering all of stanley kubrick's tricks because the man was so bored he just started putting in clues but the the thought was is that he built in his confession of about the Apollo project into the 1980 movie, The Shining with uh, Jack Nicholson and which was based on a Stephen King book. And when you look at it, it's just amazing. The, the stuff that he built into it, it was just staggering. It basically the, the confession, if you watch the, the, the film and you look at the documentary basically says that, yeah, I took the money <laughs> because look, if the government writes you a blank check, there's so many people who would take the freaking money. It's like, oh yeah, it's it's a great, it's a dream come true. A director with unlimited budget, but then it turns into a nightmare because it's like, oh crap, you know, I'm working for you know the evil guys, the bad guys, and then then he backs out of the project at the very end, uh, and then I'm still trying to figure it out, but I'm pretty sure I can find it. It's like, it, it's like, don't tell anybody, you know, don't if you tell anybody that you do this, you know, you, you can never. It's a secret that they basically held him to, and I think he tried to tell somebody. I think that person was killed. So Kubrick, you know, he he basically took the secret to his grave, but at the same time built it into the 1980 movie Shining, hoping that somebody would figure it out later. But anyway, check it out if you get a chance. It's brilliant. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, well, yeah. What else you got? Um, I was trying to think now. You've answered the majority of my questions that I was wondering. Um, I guess what what would what would you have to say about when? Because I see a lot of like arguments where it's like the curve for like when you're like looking over the ocean to another city, like you can see like the tops of buildings on the bottom. I think you mentioned it in the doc, but I forget what it. At, uh, we didn't cover it that much in the documentary. Um, it was it was it's really called atmospheric lensing, because and again the average person and I'm realizing this only in the last year how little we teach the general public meaning me included um how much we don't teach them about uh, um, physics and mathematics and chemistry and and uh, engineering we don't teach them any of that stuff so like the the air we're breathing right now you ask the average person on the street so what are we breathing right now and people say uh air it's like okay that's fine what's it made out of and they'll say uh eventually somebody's gonna say oxygen it's like no no you're barely breathing really any oxygen at all you're breathing mostly nitrogen in fact, it's, it's four parts nitrogen to one part oxygen with a little bit of trace gases, which basically is you're breathing in a thin version of it's a soup. 
It's like it's no, it's really not that much different from water with the, some bonding, but we won't even get into that. So the the distortion that we have here, what's only, but what the short version is, is that it's only about ninety nine point nine percent transparent, and it gets thicker over distance mm -hmm. no different than water if you've ever scuba dived or watched any movies about scuba divers why when you're only not even 200 feet down there you cannot see the sun it's gone because it right. cannot penetrate that far in fact even at like 90 feet you lose all color spectrums except blue when you when you're diving so the air is just a thinner version of that so at 10 miles and 20 miles and 30 miles you're basically looking through a lens and so we will cut off some of it, but it's not cutting it off. It's just magnifying it. That's why they call it atmospheric lensing. So when you take a magnifying glass and you zoom into something, oh yeah, the center of it gets really close, but the tops and bottoms get cut. No different oh, than when, like, if you're zooming in with your camera, or what I was trying to do with this thing. I don't know why it's not working, but um, so that's that's why. And so, which is also when you're. Uh, but the bigger question is this: when a boat goes off into the horizon, remember it's supposed to be gone. At some point, yeah. it's gone. But you zoom in with your camera and now it's back. Well, okay. Why is it not gone? And then you say, oh, it's going to be gone now. And then you like go off and nope, zoom in some more. At some point, that boat should be forever gone because it's on the other side of the hill, be on the other side of the curve. And yet we've made, we made challenges to science. Like show us an object at 150 miles or less that we can't see because it should be on the other side of the curve. Never, ever comes up with it. And people make all sorts of excuses. And they say, oh, it's, it's, it's refraction, it's distortion, it's all this. It's like, uh, not all the time. You know, in, in, in fact, why, why? You should be able to find me a lighthouse, a island, something that I can never, ever, ever, ever see. Now, bad weather doesn't count necessarily. You know, if it's storm clouds, you know, fog is fog. But that's never the case. Uh, and it's, it's super weird. In fact, the other question I get when people say, well, okay, why can't you see Japan from California? Why can't you see Europe from New York? And why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? Because Mount Everest is the highest place. You should be able to see it from everywhere. It's like, well, okay. okay. The, the, if you could get rid of the atmosphere, yeah, you probably could. And that's what happens in video games. Any game you play, remember, every, all video games are based on absolutely flat terrain. And the reason why they do it is because programmers, I should, give, I should send you the audio copy. Um, uh, my, the, the last book I wrote, I actually recorded the whole thing on audio and, and put it on YouTube. But I talk about this where, because I was in the gaming industry, and the reason why all games are perfectly flat and in a big box, basically in a big shoebox, is because no one's going to notice the difference. And that is, it should be on a globe, right? Because we're on a globe, you know, all, you know, whatever, whatever gaming world, it should be on a globe. It's like, no, the programmers don't build in the curvature, because why would they? It's, the player's never going to notice. So why don't they? <laughs> And so and you say, okay, what's your point? I go, well, that's actually my point. Because in this sort of world, that's what we're talking about here. If the world is truly flat, all you have to do is you can tell people anything you want. And they're going to believe it. Which is why in the, in the clues I talked about, I know it's an older movie, especially for you. Um, M. Night Shyamalan's The Village. And that is, kids will believe anything you tell them. Literally anything. You know, as long as they don't have conflicting views on the outside, they believe the world that is shown to them. So if you tell them that, that you're living, they're living in the 1800s and that the forest is filled with monsters, why would they believe anything different? Uh, right. Tru Truman Show, same sort of thing uh, where, you know, it was, he just believed the world he was in. He, he, in fact, they did it in modern day, but they could have put him in any time period they wanted. They could have made up any story they wanted, any language they wanted. That's what we're talking about here. If, the, if you tell people that the world is a globe without any proof whatsoever for, again, remember the first photograph, first full photograph wasn't taken until 1972. So how, in fact, here, let me, I'll give you a quick thing. It was from George Orwell, and I, I can't remember if I said this in the thing or not, which was, he said, he, say, he wrote a thing for a British journal, and he said, you could go to anybody on the street and you ask them how they know it's a globe. And they'll just say, well, obviously we know it's a globe. It's like, really? How do you know? Now, what's interesting about that is he wrote that in 1946. Well, NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So how did everybody in 1957 know that it was a globe? They didn't. They were told it was a globe. And their fathers and their fathers and their fathers going back for 20-something generations. Well, if there's no dissenting voices in, in any of that time period, everyone's going to believe it. It, it is very Orwellian um, in, in the conditioning 
which is uh, if you if you repeat something long enough, and the the peer group, you know, around believes it, you are going to believe it too. You have no chance. You will always believe what the what the group believes. Um, there's some wonderful. I've got a few more minutes. There's some wonderful psychological studies. You can watch these on, on online. They're fascinating. You go to any street corner. You can take 10 people. Just 10 people. You're, and just start pointing up at the sky. Pointing up at, at certain places, right? Sooner or later, you're going to start drawing a crowd. And you can ask the people in the back of the crowd who have nothing to do with those first 10 people. Hey, did you see it? You see that thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I totally see it. I don't see anything. So why they say they say something. They're just going, yes. with, the, they're going with the herd. They're going with the crowd. And that's that's why the peer pressure has kept our numbers in check. Meaning, we, if it wasn't for peer pressure, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now. It would just be, it'd just be all over the place. But that's, right. I mean, I get emails from from people every day saying friends and families and co coworkers, especially coworkers, they're scared to death of bringing it up because they're worried about the uh, the peer pressure. Right. So, yeah. Anything um, else yeah. I can. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering, like, what do you have to like um, say for like, like how astronauts will often take pictures outside of the window? What do you, what do you say that is like? I'm, well, I'm, no, no, I, no. You have to throw out the entire space program because again, NASA didn't think of it this way. I say, I say, prove to me that the world is a globe without using the space program. You right. have to, you have to throw them out, and you say why? And I go, well, because they didn't invent the globe in 1972 when they took that first shot. So it's not like we we ran headlines all over the place saying Earth now a globe in 1972. We knew that for at least 500 years. How do we know? For 500, years, there's only two arguments. One was boats going over the horizon, which HD technology has just destroyed recently, and the other is sticks and shadows argument, which most people don't know. And if they did, they'd realize that it was completely relative. So yeah, when it comes to every photo that's and I said this in in the clues, which was show me. My, my initial one was show me a shot, a video shot of any astronaut doing a 360 with a camera running. You'd think that statistically through Gemini and Mercury and Apollo and Soyuz and all the space shuttle programs, and the ISS, that would have happened by now. But you want to know the, the other one that really blew me away? I mean, seriously, I'll, I'll send you a couple Apollo shots if I get a chance. Um, but the, well, the other thing that blew me away, and I just realized this over the last, I don't know, a couple months which was, um, uh, I'll, I'll, let me use the, uh, the last Jedi argument. Did you see the last Jedi? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Piece of crap. Absolutely awful. Did you see any of the movies before that? The, the uh, other star Wars movies? Yeah. Oh, all of them. Okay. Perfect. So eight movies, nobody talked about gas gauges. Ninth right. movie, last Jedi, all of a sudden, Oh, we're going to run out of gas. It's like, what are you talking about? You can't run out of gas. It's freaking Star Wars. There's no gas gauges. There's no gas gauges. I mean, it's, just, it's like you just blew the lore out, out of the water. It's like, wait, why? How, how do you do this? You have to stay consistent. No ast I Find me an audio of any astronaut from any mission wondering how much air he's got left in his tank. Find how many minutes? It's like, oh, yeah, I got 18 minutes left. Oh, I got six minutes left. I got 24 minutes left. Find me an audio thing. Scuba divers, that's all they care about. Scuba divers, all day long, all they're doing is checking. They check their freaking gauges constantly. That's all they do. It's like, it's like how many minutes yeah. air I got left? How many minutes I got? Astronauts don't seem to care. They never, ever, ever bring it up. And you'd think the, the guys on the moon, they'd be acutely aware of how much air they had left. No one ever talks about it. Even now, no one talks about it. They, it's, and it just blows me away. Or here, I'll, I'll throw one more out. And then I, I unfortunately, I got to run here in a minute which is um, uh, the law of thermodynamics, which is spacesuits. I talked about it in one of my clues. It was called the, um, the lost nail, which is if the spacesuits are wrong, then everything else is wrong. Anything that shows a spacesuit is wrong. And that is, okay, what's wrong with spacesuits? Spacesuits aren't a basketball, meaning you take anything that's low pressure, and you can look this up online all day long. You put anything like a, like a football or a basketball or a volleyball, anything that's got pressure in a stretch arm strong, an action figure with the, that's, that's squishy, put it in a little tiny vacuum chamber, it'll burst. It'll blow up. It'll detonate. Why, didn't this, why doesn't a spacesuit do, do that? It should be a basketball. You know, you pump up a little bit in a basketball. You can't fold it. You can't crush it basketball is, is is very very rigid and it's just got a little bit of pressure difference between the inside and the outside space right. space who doesn't do this 
And the the question is, okay, why isn't it rigid? Why isn't it absolutely turned into a parade float <laughs> and, and just, you know, the guy rolls over and bursts and dies? Why hasn't that ever happened? And if you come back and say, well, it's layers, it's some special layer. It's like, no, 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 my, my winter coat has layers. Your winter coat has layers, stops the cold. Basketball has layers. Pressure has to equalize. It will go absolutely rigid. It was a brilliant thing that they came up with, which was, you know what? Because the early, you can look this up. It's really easy to find. The early versions of spacesuits were completely plastic and metal and they were boxy and they, they looked like bad robots. And because yeah. they realized there was going to be a pressure problem and someone came along and said, you know what? No one knows anything about physics. Freaking just use a soft suit. They'll buy it. They'll absolutely buy it. And they did. It's brilliant. The, the suits are completely bendable. The fingers work. Everything. You, you shouldn't be able to work your fingers, let alone do complex electronics. It was just fantastic. The way it was the, the biggest production uh, risk they ever took. That and, of course, the, the pressure problem. Whereas um, you ever see the movies... Uh, where somebody like punches a hole in an airlock. It's like, you know, you're in a spaceship. Yeah. It's like, oh, we only got two minutes of air left. Oh, what are we going to do? Get the duct tape. It's like, no, 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 no. That's not what happens. In real life, it is absolutely instantaneous. Meaning once that hole happens, the, the pressure equalizes within a fraction of a second and that's it. It's over. You can look up a wonderful video out there. Um, it's a series of videos done by the Germans called um, Vacuum versus Steel Rail Car where they apply a vacuum field to uh, a, a rail car, a, a hollowed out rail car, right? Steel, not aluminum, it's freaking steel. And literally within a tenth of a second, that thing just crushes like a, like a freaking giant. Just, <laughs> it was it. And so it's like, what's your point? My point is, uh, why doesn't the ISS do that? Why, right. is, why isn't the ISS, I, how is the ISS, which is not steel, it is aluminum and plastic. How does that thing not just blow up? Anyway, I could go on and on. I talk about this all, stuff all the time. Uh, yeah. So feel free to use this in whatever project you want. So if you need any follow-up materials or anything else, let me know. Oh, yeah, perfect. Thank you so much for talking. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, no problem. Really um, yeah, if, you're, if your teacher has any follow-up questions or any of the classes questions and you want me to Skype in, happy to do it. Okay, right? I'll, I'll let them know. All right, man. All right. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye.